All right, I got a joke for you guys. Are you ready for this? Did you hear the one about the constipated accountant? He couldn't budget. <laughs> Alright, now that we got that out of the way, moving on. Alright, today we're talking about chapter number 5. Chapter 5 is about cost behavior. Things you should know after reading this chapter, you should know what a mixed cost is. You should also know what a step variable cost is and the difference between a step variable cost and a true variable cost. And you should also be able to tell the difference between a committed fixed cost and a discretionary fixed cost. So those are some things that you can keep in mind as you're reading through the chapter, but we're not going to be talking about the chapter today, we're going to be talking about problems. Particularly, problem number E5-7, one of the problems that we didn't get to in lecture. So, you guys already have the answer key in Excel, which I posted on the content section of Learn at UW. So you might want to pull that down as we're going through E5-7. So, E5-7, we're talking about the high and low method. Not to be confused with the quick and dirty method. Kids. So, E5-7, we're talking about Hoi Choi Transport Limited. They operate a small fleet of delivery trucks in Singapore. How exciting! Alright, let's do some math. So they tell us if a truck has driven 105,000 kilometers during a year, the average operating cost is 11.4 cents in that year. Whereas if a truck has only driven 70,000 kilometers during the year, the average operating cost increases to 13.4 cents per kilometer. So perfect, it only gives us two activity levels, so we're going to use that as the high activity level and the low activity level. Specifically, we're going to use the 105,000 kilometers for the high activity level, and we're going to use the 70,000 kilometers for the low activity level. So, construct a chart first. Once you write in the kilometers driven, you also want to add in a column for the total annual cost. The total annual cost will come out to $11,970 for a high activity level, whereas it'll come out to $9,380 for the low activity level. Once you get those numbers in place, you can calculate the change both for the kilometers driven and the total annual cost. This will give you 35,000 for kilometers driven and 2,590 for the total annual cost change. Once you have those numbers in place, you can calculate the variable cost element. Do you remember the equation for the variable cost element? For the variable cost element, you take the change in cost divided by the change in activity. This is going to give you 0.074 cents per kilometer. So you take the $2,590 for total annual cost change divided by the 35,000 kilometers driven change. This is going to give you 0.074 cents per kilometer driven. Now that you have the variable cost element calculated, now you're going to have to figure out the fixed cost element. To get the fixed cost element, you take the total cost at the high activity level minus the variable cost element, and that's going to give you the fixed cost per year. So you take the $11,970 total annual cost at the high activity level, minus 7,770, which you get by taking the 0.074 cents per kilometer multiplied by the 105,000 kilometers driven at the high activity level. And that's going to give you a total of $4,200 for fixed costs per year. Okay, now that you have the total fixed costs of $4,200 and you know the variable cost element of 0.074 cents per kilometer, you can make a cost formula. Do you remember what the equation for the cost formula is? Hint, it's the equation of a line. If you were thinking y equals mx plus b, you were correct. So in this case, the cost formula for truck driving expense is going to be y equals 0.074x plus 4,200. And then the final question of the exercise asks, if a truck were driven 80,000 kilometers during a year, what total cost would you expect to be incurred? Well, that's not so bad, is it? Just plug that 80,000 kilometers into our cost formula. So, your equation would be y equals 0 0.074 times 80,000 plus 4,200. And the magic number is... $10,120. Yay! You successfully completed E5-7. Good job! Okay, that's all I have for today. Thanks for coming along with me on Chapter 5. I'm glad we did a high-level cost problem together. But also from chapter 5, don't forget that you need to know how to make a contribution format income statement. So keep that in your noggin too. Have a super duper rest of the weekend and I will see you all on Monday. Cue the outro music. Yeah.